Hey guys, this is MTG Degree, and my name is Luke, and today we're going to do a bit of an art tutorial, and we are going to learn how to use paint to extend cards. So, first of all, you need to pick a card. This actually has a bit of an art to it. So, here we can see that there's something here that kind of wants to go out of the frame, you know? So, if you want something to sort of pop, you kind of pick something that does this sort of thing and some arts are pretty well contained within here and it's kinda of hard to pick what to extend if you just want to extend one little thing on the card so picking what you're gonna do is the first step secondly uh, you'll need some paint so I like these Citadel paints I can buy them at my local game store and they are designed for painting miniatures but they also work very well for this and basically the way that they work is they've got these little lips inside and so when you shake the paint and then open the lip then it's right there and you can get your brush at that. Now these are acrylic paints and I have heard that you can get some really cheap ones at a place like Hobby Lobby and I just didn't do that because I really like supporting my lo local game store but if money is an issue you can go and get a, a cheaper option elsewhere next thing you're going to need is a brush. These brushes are called the Army Painter and they are designed for painting miniatures once again. So they're kind of on the scale that we want to be working in. And mine's got a little bit of paint on it here. Um, my personal favorite is the Psycho. And uh, it's basically because you have to be a psychopath to use a brush this small. If you can tell, it's a very tiny brush. Alright, and then you're gonna need some water to clean your brush and also to uh, to thin out your paints which we'll talk about and then the last thing something to paint on I actually just like using a little towel here this one's got wintry penguins on it but there we go oh and one more thing of course something to mix your paints on I haven't actually cleaned this one off but you can kinda of just get at it with your fingernails and it comes off with a little bit of effort all right, so let's just begin, huh? So generally people like to do kind of like a base coat out here. Now, since this sword is basically gray, I'm gonna do a little base coat in gray. And so what you do is you pick a gray. I'm just gonna do this gray, I guess. Or maybe my slightly darker gray. And then steal some paint. Actually, I'm going to use one of my bigger brushes for this. The only downside of the Psycho is it doesn't grab much paint at once. So if you want to mix paint, it doesn't... It grabs such a small amount that it will dry in like three seconds. So you have to grab one that can get a little bit more. So let's grab this guy. Alright, so then we always add some water to our paint, whatever we pick up, because in order for these to be tournament legal, the paint has to be so exceedingly thin that you can't feel a change in thickness on the layer. Um, and this is so that cards aren't marked in tournament play. And of course, I like everything to be able to be used by the serious player, so I like to make mine my layer is really thin, that way if they take it somewhere they can still use it. And I'm just winging this. Generally I spend some time thinking about it or whatever, but I'm just gonna wing it. Oh, and by the way, as far as the materials go, I want to remind you guys, don't buy the most expensive stuff out there. I mean, you know, you'll be able to find brushes made out of, like, unicorn hair or whatever, cost $60 each, and those things won't make you a better artist. What will make you a better artist is practice. So just get some stuff that's in a workable price range for you, 
and then continue on from there. Now, because we're working on such a small part here, always wait for what you're doing to dry and then keep on working, which is actually really hard to do. <laughs> it's extremely tempting to just go in there and keep on working on it, keep on working on it, but you just have to wait for it to dry. You can blow at it a little bit to get it to go a little faster. But patience is key. And if you don't have a lot of patience as a person, this is probably not part of the Magic the Gathering hobby that you want to get into. <laughs> it takes a long time. Of course, there are ways to rush everything. I just try not to. Haste makes waste, as they say. Or in this case, bad art. Now one trick you'll see a lot of artists do is kind of take whatever color they're using and bleed it in a little bit. And this makes the difference between where the line, where this line on the border is and the stuff that you did, it kind of blurs that line so it's harder to tell. And everyone likes art that's a little bit more seamless. All right, so I can tell in this in this piece that there is a little thin black line on the bottom of this sword because I guess the sword's not that sharp so we're gonna take this black and mix it with a little bit of gray because very few things are truly completely black or completely white so I like to do a little bit of mixing so I'm going to take this black and mix it with our gray here and get something pretty dark to put on that bottom edge. And if you mess up, always remember there's another layer of paint that you can work with. So just layer on top of layer. The only thing that stops you from doing that indefinitely is if you want the cards to be legal in tournament play. But for your first few, don't even worry about that. That's not something worth worrying about. All right, so I put that little black line on the bottom. And everything in this image is very red. And that's even the steel has just a little bit of a red tint into it. So this gray base coat that I put on, I'm actually going to lighten it up a little bit because it looks a little bit darker than what's behind and add a little bit of that red that's in the rest of the image. So first I'm gonna lighten it up. White will do that quite nicely. And by the way, one of the hardest things about doing this is figuring out how the heck to match your colors. Sometimes you'll have something on your palette and you're like, oh, that's going to match perfectly with what you have on the card. It's just a little bit off. Of course, what will take away a lot of the stress of this is being colorblind. <laughs> so maybe that's actually a blessing in some cases. And just for the sake of video length, I am probably not going to uh, mix and match colors quite as much as I would. And we're just going to have it be sort of a rough alter as far as I'm concerned, just so that we can get, get done a little bit earlier. So this stuff, when I'm pulling it on the palette, looks like it's got a little bit more of that reddish tint to it and I add this water as I do to thin it out so let's see how that looks oh man that matches really well actually pretty darn well so I'm just gonna cover my gray base coat and that stuff And then, of course, we're always nitpicky, so now that I just said that it was really well, 
I'm already seeing that I would like to change the tint a little bit, but we're just gonna rush through that. So you guys can kind of just get the idea without struggling with me. So now where this blade has the two halves, there's a little bit of a shadow here. So I'm gonna try to mix a paint to represent that shadow. Just a little bit. I'm gonna bleed the shadow in a little bit here too. So there we go, it's bled in. And you'll notice we're using a goblin heel cutter here, and that's something I kind of suggest for you guys, which is don't get excited and do your favorite card. Just take a card that's kind of suited for it, like a goblin heel cutter, and just go to town on that card and learn the ropes. It'll probably take you about three or four cards before you start feeling sort of confident. Before then, it'll just be a sort of a pile of mistakes, but the mistakes will get less and less noticeable, or at least that's what we hope. And I know I said that I don't mix paint with this Psycho brush, but I just have a hard time setting down a brush once I've picked it up. We've got a watery pile there. Let's get some more white. All right, so now we've got a light gray here. And I think painting the top of the sword with this will be just fine. Oh, my brush is a little overloaded. If you get it right at the beginning, sometimes you can pull it right off. I didn't quite manage there, but Since we're a little bit rushed, that's what we get, right? I'll just take some of the paint that I mixed and pop it right on top. These exceedingly thin layers dry very quickly. All right, and just for the sake of uh, a short tutorial, Let's call that done, shall we? Always clean your brushes afterwards. This is uh, seems like basic advice, but sometimes you forget and that acrylic just sticks in there so hard that when you try to get it back out again, you twist all your bristles and your brush is not usable anymore. It's happened to me once or twice, so just go ahead and actually remember to clean up after yourself. So there's a goblin heel cutter. He's kind of got that, uh, that planeswalkery feel to him where he's coming right out of the border. Uh, maybe a little unnecessarily fancy for common, but there you go. This has been MTG Degree. My name is Luke, and if you found this video to be interesting or useful to you, please subscribe down below and see you next time.